All right, welcome back. It's time for our very first and only hot topic. And uh, the Society of Family uh, Health wants the private sector to partner with them in providing um, testing to ensure that individuals have access to confident convenient and confidential testing services that empower them to take control of their health. And I've been joined by Dr. Tuyi Mebawondu, public health physician and publisher, CEO Health Nika. Good morning to you. Good morning, Dr. Tuyi Mebawondu. Good morning, Barika de Sala. Is it, is it appropriate for me to say Barika de Sala to you? Oh well, it, it won't be. It's 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 not out of order. Does that the holiday is over already, <laughs> and we are at work. So, you want to tell us more about this roadmap that it's been put in place uh, to facilitate increased private sector involvement. Um, I thank you so much. If we look at um, um, our figures, as far as uh, HIV is concerned, our prevalence rate is about, uh, the last sentinel study showed that we're about 4.4% um, prevalence rate of HIV. Over nine people um, are still living with the virus, and people are transmission is still ongoing. One of the greatest disincentives, one of the biggest challenge to really beat down the HIV and achieve our 2030 roadmap is actually access to testing. Access to testing. Knowing your status is the first concrete and most successful step to deal with HIV. And then, um, obviously, there are many obstacles to, to, to HIV testing. First and foremost, right, the stigma is there that limits uh, individual community to do their testing. Secondly, um, what are the uh, test kits available for them to do those testing? Thirdly, uh, what do they do to teach even when they become so positive? And how do they now you know, escalate their results and get um, help? Um, the major factor is this. What this roadmap is doing is actually to help individuals to bring the private sectors to help individuals to do uh, self-testing. Now, um, the, the, the goal essentially first is to make people aware that they can do their tests by themselves and know their results. Secondly, is to know the appropriate kit to use to do those tests. Thirdly, is to actually find, know what next to do. Should the test be positive or negative? What you call uh, interpretation of the test. So, um, it's most needed, it's most essential. We have to be engaging because if Nigeria is having number two position in HIV body worldwide, it means that the disease is still with us and we need to do more than what we're doing right today. So, you are saying, you are saying that HIV is still a pandemic in Nigeria? Yeah, it's endemic. Okay, um, let me clarify. If we say endemic, uh, it means that the thing is there, we spread within the nation. If we say pandemic, we say that it's still a problem worldwide. Um, in some countries, it's also part of uh, the world, people are even looking for zero transmission, uh, even as early as next year. Okay? But for us, we still have the, the privilege uh, pay high, and that, uh, you know, that even children, as much as several hundred thousand uh, children, uh, are picking HIV, uh, having HIV in Nigeria. Those are still a big body uh, that we need to really pick up. Yeah, thanks for that uh, correction about between pandemic and endemic. Now, you are cutting the private sector. Talk to us about how you are cutting the private sector to synergize with you in making self testing. Um, a reality because the target here is for people to have convenient and confidential convenient and confidential uh, testing uh, to be able to you know be responsible for their own testing and uh, the society for family health which i have not ever said for family health that we 
we we'll find we we'll find a way to work with them to ensure that um, uh, we want we we'll see primary sector investment. What are these areas of investment um, to develop the roadmap? One, um, education, education. Um, Public sectors, either at the level of their own functioning or at the or type of support that help in educating the people um, about HIV and that find that the still is still with us and we need to do more about it. Secondly, investment. Um, you know, all this from the kids to education to enhance uh, the to um, provide access for the population requires investment. Investment in terms of money. That can be you know, put in the hands of the people who support the uh, of family health and so many other organizations like that to help them, you know, uh, get through to the process of um, enlightening the child with testing. Um, so, mainly education, investment, provision of kids, you know, uh, these are key areas where private sector can be of use. Because at the end of the day, uh, in early Nigeria, and HIV free Nigeria is good for business, it's good for economy, and it's good for the general growth of the population, indeed, growth of the private sector. All right. So, you know, for many people, HIV. Uh, is it, there was a time when all over the place it was HIV, 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 and m not many people. I'm guessing not many people um, understand that it is still a pandemic globally and that it is such a, a serious matter it's still such a serious matter in nigeria today um so is it that enlightenment have reduced in nigeria or or people have decided to just ignore it and move on with their life what is really the situation um i, I think um saying that we have ignored it, what, what has happened is this when the thing became um, and, um, such an epidemic or pandemic that everybody is talking about, it was a problem. A lot of attention was from to it. So what we experience now is that other diseases are coming up. It has been pushed to the background, especially to the developed world who, who would be requisite money, drugs, investment. To drive it down. They've given us the people that are able to manage that control it. The point we're seeing in Nigeria is that we have a besieged with all sorts of diseases that is actually taking our attention away from each other. But the right thing is for us not to allow that to continue. The right thing for us is to actually bring this thing to the focus. No flow that Nigeria has accomplished number two uh, with each other global globally. And we can't allow like this to happen. Now, um, the part of this that happened is that government. But apart from lack of funds to do great um, diseases, we are seeing a lot of corruption, even in terms of our HIV management system. A lot of corruption that is even driving a lot of donors uh, away from us. Then we should be able to uh, move further by ensuring that we are not depending on donors, we are depending on ourselves to drive the HIV. That's why the involvement of public sector is so important. Now, we have to keep Talking the, the talking the talk, and uh, we have to keep signaling. We have to keep enlightening people the more that HIV is still with us. But because of the uh, you know experiment COVID came, so of those talks about HIV went to the background and became a big problem. So for us now, uh, we cannot we cannot just leave the thing to chance because the subject of the virus is a big problem. Good enough, we have drugs. Good enough, we have a uh, proper testing kit. That are cheaper on that before. A uh, um, uh, month, a month cost of the activity to buy, I don't think it's about 45,000, 50,000. But that is free of charge. And then we have to be able to look to that level of sustainability where we don't have to really depend on a foreign country to give us HIV drugs. We want us to manufacture and to push to the country and, you know, and then aggressively achieve transmission of HIV, zero transmission of HIV by 2030. So, like we are doing. That which, are, which is quite right. It's important that media keep the information up to. Okay, talk to us about this uh, self-testing kit. How available is it and how successful have you been uh, with it since you pushed it out, since it was pushed out? Uh, well, um, self-testing kit, as, as the name implies, means that you as a person, at the comfort of your house, with the right knowledge, 
for you to do your test and happy the results. Now, first and foremost, what it does is that it eradicates what we we'll call um, the burden of having to, you know, of privacy. Privacy, you know that um, it's a private thing to you once you know. But first and foremost, before you get to that first point, you must have some sort of education because some people can test themselves and become suicidal. They can test themselves and go into depression. So, um, HIV positivity is not a death sentence. That is the first thing we need to do and make it so clear to the people. That doesn't say because they're HIV positive, they're dead. They're dead. So, what can happen is that there's a kid um, right there, there's a thing like what we used to do with their sugar level and so many other things. Uh, there's actually needs to teach people. Uh, the, the kids are available. Uh, people need to just understand how to use it and how to interpret it up and how to then go ahead and interact with the right medical facilities or the right medical professional in, in interpreting those results and, um, and the next action. But for the kids that are available, what, what is happening is that Society for Family Health uh, through their various family partnership partnership is simply investment to make those kids who are available to be as free as even the drug for the HIV so that people can know their status. Because that's the starting point of using the presence of HIV. Once you know your status, you know the type of reaction to take, the normal reaction to take, then uh, you can then start to think that we achieve that zero transmission. At the point of selling this kit to the people, uh, do they provide counseling? Is there some sort of uh, counseling that precedes this testing? As people are exactly. buying the kit, you give them yes. the counseling and then you go home with this, whatever it is, but this is it, this is it, this is it. What To prepare their like minds. I, like I said earlier, the proper, the computer proper testing is the one that's involved. First of all, you're going to call it, you can't sell it. You can't sell this is what HIV is. This is how to that put you done. This is the likely outcomes. This is what to do should you have this or this or that. Now, it's not such, it's not that of course the government must be there before the thing you go over there. You need to relate to somebody to tell them your result. Um, now, um, finally, it's important that the sick, we have to keep the secrecy. How we sufficiently educate the person on what to do. Okay, then you can then give the person the chance to go and do the test. If it's not clear, you don't go through the thing to the person. It doesn't understand clearly what it involves and the likely reaction and outcome. Okay, it should that person be positive, or well, they will need to be referred to a center where I take drugs, access to ARV, further counseling, family support, and the case may be. If the person is negative, you need to keep himself or herself negative should be emphasized consistent. These are the preventive methods do this, do this, do this, so that you remain negative. And then, of course, we prepare them, educate them on the window period. I uh, such a way that if you are negative now, please wait for another three months and test your test. And then, while waiting, uh, uh, do all this prevention so that you don't expose yourself for next So, uh, it's not just Calling somebody and finding a, 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 a test kit to the person without counseling, without proper education, or what the person should do, um, should the result not be palliative, or even the result is palliative, and also decisions to take. That is that. Um, it's important to not just drop test to uh, test kit to somebody without educating the person on the life of So, uh, if, if, if there is going to be a pre counseling before anyone can buy these kits. That means that these kits can only be bought at very special centers then? So what it means essentially is this. As you are involved in the private sector, for instance, um, uh, Cross TV, uh, your center, people come to the proper education. Uh, okay, that's how to people and then large numbers of people that can get tested. You give the proper education, you cancel everybody to know how many people ask questions, you have a clear understanding. Yeah, you can choose to buy the kids or give them the kids to that test themselves, and they know where yeah, to, to, to talk to after the test. Is that, if there is something I have to know already, it's not a big thing. 
If you see somebody having a depression or suicidal ideation, you better try to ask them to go to the HR because that's what you're talking about. If you think that the person that actually starts uh, what we call suicide or prior suicide, or even harm himself or self harm at the Facebook. So, what it means is that you engage larger number of the campus of the education and correction, create access to portals where they can have proper knowledge and what to do, and then where they can even ask questions, create line uh, where they can have discussion on the clear cut uh, definition of what should be done. So, that is how it is done. It's not just that, um, uh, because if you look at it, resources to be able to provide uh, people at all the centers, and it could be, be huge. But apart from that, you need to do more by, you know, providing on offline uh, counseling center, by like visiting uh, private uh, places and having a general uh, two minutes, two minutes, or five minutes talk and place for people. And then the people opportunity at the means of getting to. So these okay. self-testing kits, uh, how readily available are they? for people, where can people find them? Because somebody, I imagine someone is watching right now and wondering, okay, where can one find this kit to buy? I, I'm sure um, most of the uh, pharmacies, you know, um, retail pharmacy can actually provide this kit for people to use. Uh, we can even get more information from the website of the for Public Health, um, you know, uh, about the uh, idea about where to get it to go. I'm sure you know what we talk about is big pharmacy and uh and the Okay, because if you enter hospital normally it's supposed to be test for you. It would merely free of charge. Right? There was supposed to be coming to two days that can be test for you free of charge. All right, talk to us about this UNAIDS 95-95-95 target by twenty thirty. Um exactly the target to ensure that ninety five percent uh have put their testing and then we have that kind of reduction uh, in transmission of the virus by COVID-19. Um, it's, it's a bold initiative uh, part of the team of uh, of SSG Summit Development Code that is supposed to help fight down some of these things whereby, you know, 95% of the population have like that access to the that food, both the that they are uh, their status and then have that that percent deduction. So what we're trying to get to is get to zero transmission uh, of the virus for one person to another. And the strategy is so clear. First and foremost, we look at the pregnant women. We don't want uh, mother to try transmission of the virus and what you do at this point to uh, use the, the period of pregnancy and delivery. Uh, to look at women and then check their status, those one that are negative, they keep their negative, do some counseling at the portal, and then if they are positive, they are free to prevention to mother, uh, they are of mother to child transmission uh, care, uh, and then you still manage them. Then that's also a for you to be able to check the father, okay, and look at whether uh, the contact of family care. So, that actually is the starting point of uh, of achieving the that five that five that five years Well, I do know that in 2020 the target was 90, 90, 90, and I understand it wasn't even achieved. And so here you have 95, 95, 95 for 2030. <laughs> just a cliche. Are you guys just trying to have fun uh, and no, do your work? No, 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 no. Are you just trying to have fun and do your work? No, Is there uh, any kind of determination uh, to meet these targets? You see, you, you must make your goal bold, very audacious, you know. Um, because in reality, it was compelling. It was challenge you. It was make you want to do something extra. Um, if you set a, a, a low goal, at the end of the day, you might defeat the purpose of beating the owner. And um, when the planet reacts is that, what we do is that you, you attack the whole thing. And that bold initiative allows movement of human resources, movement of money, movement of uh, even media to achieve such goal. If you set a goal that is low and just down there, people will just look at it and say that, well, um, the goal is there. And there will not be that kind of, uh, you know, 
cooperation, you know, support, and get to actually ensure it happens. So it's nice to set up a, a, a big, very ambitious goal. We cannot just hang down with this virus forever. It's time to let it go. All right, uh, let's still go back to this um, involvement, this this involvement that you want the private sector to to to, to get involved in and this uh, testing. How again um, should an investor who is listening right now um, be getting involved in this? And just how lucrative would it be for investors, the private sector, to get involved in this? Um, you see, let, let's face it. Health is more of a social service. Um, we can get um, so-called... Uh, it's not about being, it's not about profit. It's not about diet profit. Uh, what I mean, in essence, is that it's not, because it's not like drilling of oil or leather protection. Where somebody can be charged uh, 500 million or whatever. No. Now, what we're looking at is that at the level of private sector, can you, one, can you contribute, okay, either in terms of finance, human resources, or whatever it's needed, you know, purchase of kits uh, to help us triple um, HIV knowledge, HIV testing. Okay, now can you provide your space also um, to interact with the, with the population, with your people, with your worker in this regard? Can you support campaign um, to help broaden the knowledge and the depth and the knowledge of it and depth of it, uh, uh, HIV, including the testing? These are the critical things. So, how, how, why does this profit you? One, reduction of HIV in the society generally will help you a lot, even your workers, okay, even the general population. The body of HIV is humongous. Uh, apart from the psychological and the stigma that you get to it, it comes, it has led to, uh, you know, um, the subject of some disease that should have been in the past. Most of the new tuberculosis we are seeing, most of the recent tuberculosis we are seeing, came as a result of HIV. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, actually an alliance of terror, tuberculosis and HIV, for instance. Now, you are in a country where a lot of malnutrition is turning on the face. You see the number of children that malnourish has more than 45 million of severe malnourished children. Now, HIV and malnutrition are good friends because malnutrition leads to uh, worse manifestation of HIV. HIV leads to malnutrition. So you see the connection, and malnutrition also actually lead to uh, brain malfunctioning of the brain. You see the connection between boost, boosting productivity, boosting investment, and reduction of HIV and life diseases. Now, nobody wants, for instance, to be seeing the resistance strain of the virus, which we know, which is because more costly. Look at the sources that are going to put to treat HIV even in a country like this. So, if the private sectors partake fully in the, um, in the in boosting and, and, you know, and testing of HIV, it, it helps the private sector, it helps society, it helps the economy. All right, talk to us about the corruption you said had affected funding um, for that sector. Now, the big elephant in the room in every aspect of that is actually because you see, when you seek for resources, either internally or externally, the key point is that those resources will be used appropriately and they are counted for. You must have the requisite bank for the box everybody is put in. Don't forget, some a lot of these things are do not fund Okay? And you remember at the point in time, uh, we had a problem where some of those do not run the of Nigeria because of this kind of corruption. Um, you will get notice of some of those events that have been funded, and you see a lot of money being received, being misapplied in a way. It's still healthy. It's not going to encourage anybody to put your money uh, into your system. And because of that, it, 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 it structures and prevents the flow of funds to critical health uh, areas. 
So um, it's an open knowledge that the point in time that a lot of even those civilization people and then Gavi and Co and even you and I start wondering um why the bunch of people to Nigeria what is happening to it. And um it's obvious we, we see it everywhere. So but again we hope that we'll be able to put a lot of uh, governance in place to reduce exposure um uh, and need uh, to curb that level of uh, certification is used uh, and diversion of funds that we see in those things. And then some of those things, you see them asking for uh, buying a lot of that that they not necessary. Uh, Overly poisoning, inflating uh, the purchase of things just to keep from extra money to their pocket. And of course, a lot of prisons are put in place to reduce such uh, at least from the level of the payments. We hope that Nigeria will actually go wrong with this and prevent such a matter. Yeah, so did that, in, that corruption, apart from diversion of funds and all of that, did, all, did that also include exaggeration of, exaggeration of figures? Indeed, that's why you go over invoicing, where, you know, I, no, not figures of HIV, not, not, not the privilege rate, though. No, you know, no, I'm but, talking about figures of HIV, where they're making it seem more than it really was, so oh, they no, can no, get no, more funds for, no, from difficult. those who are, donate, who are donating money. Uh, it's difficult, it's difficult. Corruption does not involve those data. The process of collecting those data are very rigorous. I was involved in the um, National Strategic Defense Development Plan 2, okay? I was in one of the state coordinators. The process of verification and validating results are very, very tedious and rigorous. And it's not just anybody sitting down and bringing results. You have to, you have to bring evidence for those results. You have to show data to correlate those results. It goes through about four vetting processes at the local, state, consultant, federal level. It's a very good When you see a figure coming out from Nigeria, you can tell you that Nigeria malnutrition is this number. Believe it. It's not it's a fact. There are data, rigorous processes that lead to that. So, when, when, when we say the HIV prevalence in Nigeria is 1.4, when we say that the we have this is about uh, 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 1.9 million, okay, well, it's right. There are figures to show that. When you do a set, next sentinel, if it changes, you very that thing, okay? So we're not talking about, we're talking about the fund funds, you know, the money that comes to that day, how it is used, how the forces are prepared, you know, and over invoicing and the market of some of this. That's what we're talking about. It's not about the figures at all. Yeah, I, I knew that was what you were talking about. I just wanted to also establish if part of the corruption included exaggeration no. of the figure, the no, no, prevalence no, no, no. of HIV it, in Nigeria. Even if you're going to look at it, for me, I think it's actually, you know, uh, underestimating, you know, it can be over. Because, right, what do you do with those sentiments? You look at the clinical population and look at testing and look at the rate of, of, of uh, conversion. How many people you have to tell you know, where there's still a lot of people, a, a huge gap. Because if you look at the youth, 15 to 40, 15 to 49, that from the huge portion of people with HIV, what is the testing rate? About 5, 6 percent. That's pretty low. Okay? So, and this was supposed to help deepen this number, okay, of people that are get tested. Here we can see the real figure, okay? Um, it's not, everybody's as a to any number. It too happen. Because in reality, you're not the only person involved. Your partners are involved. And so many agencies, international, they are also involved. A lot of levels are involved. So your target population again? Yeah, 15 to 49. 15 to 39. 49. 49. Okay, so what have been the barriers to the growth of HIV testing in Nigeria? Stigma is the number one thing. Stigma, you know. Secondly, availability of those kids. And then you, you see that this is actually addressing the, the roadmap is addressing this availability of, this, of, of, the, of the test kit. Um, the knowledge gap. Knowledge gap is a huge barrier. Um, you see a lot of disinformation, disinformation, and weaponization of information going on, especially um, in our health system. 
So if you don't have the right information, you don't have the right uh, 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 understanding to embrace testing, becomes the problem. And if there's a lot of stigma, and then sometimes there are cultural impediments and religious impediments to which I've tested. Um, a lot of the worship is going on that test is not my portion. Uh, whose portion is supposed to be? So you need to honestly address some of those sort of those impediments. Yes, certainly, uh, certainly, I've mentioned my like that. They are able to they are able to set up availability. It's also limited. And that's why that's what we get this road map, one of the road map is going to address, you know, to create uh, more sector, to create more efficient, to try to deliver knowledge gap, to deliver to to focus, to narrow the knowledge gap and then uh, you know, do a lot of counseling of people. Well, you uh, health professionals now say that HIV is not a death sentence as people used to think it was. Uh, tell us what has changed from when uh, we, we newly heard about it back in the days and when people were told or made to believe or when it seemed like it was a death sentence to now. What has changed? What are the revolutions that have taken place? Good enough. Um, I, I uh, came... But when I was my general medical training, uh, HIV was not in our curriculum. So I saw the beginning of HIV up to where it is now. I um, I was one of the first set to be trained on what we call the, the access to the HIV and to the virus, especially at the family level. Uh, when the first set, when we were trying to apply the antiviral, so I can actually tell you the evolution of it. It came uh, with a lot of uh, Information and um, and the stigmatization. Uh, initially, who were talking about being affected, it's affected and the possibility from God to, to deal with homosexuals and other sinners. Uh, in fact, it became a big issue. In fact, one of the university students summer had to actually to put on flat because of uh, her, her comments of being with the child. Then the stigma came, it became a issue of the public who them that are always policy. I remember the figure in Haiti was so alarming um, in the late 1980s, you know, when we saw a lot of people among public, among public, not only the public, but the public. Um, it was so, in fact, it, there was a spiritual connotation. I remember a lady that was um, that was a girlfriend to one tailor in the battle, uh, was losing weight. Uh, you said she didn't know what was wrong with it. The lady lost weight and died. And then he was used to <laughs> for each one. Ultimately, later <laughs> it was the one that really had HIV. So a lot of um, like most new diseases, a lot of um, drug pollution came. But and then we moved to developing uh, ARV drugs, antiviral drugs that were then used to slow down because the monotherapy initially we become multiple drugs that were combined together, and then we able to deliver longevity to the people with HIV. That working is with some problem. Uh, Professor uh, Dusberg of the University of California and the likes of uh, Tambo Beki of South Africa driving the drug and said it was meant to kill uh, like, uh, Africans and all this stuff. And HIV number ballooned. Because of that singular government policy, HIV number ballooned in South Africa. It became a big issue in South Africa because governments you know, uh, chose to slow down. Um, in adopting the introvert dog. They said the from big farmer, the just went to make money, they created the virus, all sorts of rumors came. But now, when people saw that the just were actually, you know, elevating life, you know, because then I remember one of my clients those days was somebody who, working with the, with the facility, had the virus, you know. The only time we could do that, when the baby was falling sick, it is not only baby falling sick, having the complex symptoms that we're not sure of. But of course, after falling that, that the baby dead, the, the, even the baby at the dog was not directly attended to death. But of course, after that, the woman had one, two, together, even in the university. Now. They are negative, and the man is still alive. So we saw the drugs benefit, giving life. We now chose to look at the concept of a family in HIV uh, care, whereby, you know, once 
anybody in the family is positive, we bring the father, we bring the mother, we cancel them together and apply to the doctor to everybody and teach them how to live a better life. The team expanded, you know, to uh, improve testing, improve ARV, because ARV then, a dose was like, a uh, month dose was like 45,000 then. It then became, it came down gradually and became now free at the previous center. If it's not free now, it's because it's affordable. That you can, it's, 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 it's that have the can buy. So we have moved from era of uh, of, um, of uh, rumors, era of uh, more lack of information, disinformation, misinformation, and uh, spiritualizing the disease. To era where we have the drugs now, people can do. And um, it used to be there that once you have HIV, you cannot breastfeed, you cannot get pregnant. But now, you can get pregnant, breastfeed, live with people. And HIV will not get the person. Okay, so, thank you. So. Interesting journey so far. But we can still do better. The ultimate aim is that five, 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 five. Get rid of HIV, stop the transmission, and we can then think of another disease. Well, thank you, Dr. Tuyi Mebawando, for your time and information on HIV and what the Society of Family Health is doing to help those who have been affected. Thank you for having me. Let me say this. I'm not, uh, I don't work for Society for Family Health. Yes, that has been established. Yes. Yeah, thank thank you. you. All right. So, Dr. Tuyi Meba Wandu is of the public health. Uh, he's a public health physician and publisher, CEO, Health NECA. Well, that's the much we'll be taking from our hot topic. We'll be back with sports, and Mudashiru is standing by for that. Stay with us. <laughs>